We're continuing our Lenten look at the parables of Matthew 13, and today we'll be looking at verses 44 to 46. I invite you now to again listen for the Word of God. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever seen those ads for the genealogy tests that you can do now with your DNA, you know, where you swab it and send it in and they give you this printout of all the different places in the world that compose you? Have you seen those before? Has anybody done it? Probably a couple of you, yeah, a few of you have done it. You know, picture, picture the little printout. You've probably seen it in the ads before. Picture that printout and it'll say like, you know, you're 48% Scottish, you're 28% English, that would be sad, but you might be part English. Um, you know, and, and you just kind of go down the list, and then a lot of people seem to have like, you know, 5% Turkish or 3% Angolan or something like that. You know, everybody has this makeup of, of who they are genetically, and it's kind of a, an interesting thing. It's a novel thing, but have you, have you ever thought about what really went into you becoming you? When, when you look at that printout, it's not just about DNA and geography, right? Just because it says that you're this much Scottish, it doesn't mean that the land of Scotland is your ancestor. Your ancestor were people. Your ancestors were people just like you. And, and when you think about it this way, when you think about what it took to get us here today, our history is not one of just genetics and land. It is one of stories. Stories. Every single little part of you that was contributed by an ancestor hides within it some story of how you got here. Maybe some ancestor way back in the past, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, maybe, maybe your ancestors then, maybe they were members of different tribes in whatever country they lived in, and their love affair was against all the rules, but because they were willing to do that, your ancestor was born. Or perhaps, perhaps way back in your history, not, maybe not even that long ago, two people fell in love at a very young age and were married and had the most wonderful marriage together for 60 years, and out of that marriage, your ancestor came to be. You know, I'm, I'm part Cherokee, and so I wonder... I wonder about my ancestors and the Trail of Tears. Did my ancestors go along the Trail of Tears? Was, I, was my line conceived prior to that journey or was it afterwards? Did, did one of my ancestors have to survive that march in order for me to be here today? I don't know. But I do know that my entire history, just like yours, is full of these hidden stories. Stories which involved real people just like us creating more people just like us that we will never know. We are the sum total of a lot of different stories. You know, Jesus talks a lot about family in Scripture, but he doesn't just talk about our biological families. He talks about our spiritual families. You don't just have a biological family. You have a spiritual family as well. You have spiritual ancestors, people who came before you and laid the foundation for the faith which you have carried throughout the course of your life. And through that history, through that history, there are a lot of different stories. There are people who were deeply moved in their faith by something they heard proclaimed by a priest when they were just able to piece together a few words of Latin because the gospel wasn't read in their language, or, or who heard a piece of music, or who were so devoted to their family, who was so devoted to their faith, that the idea of forsaking their faith seemed impossible to them. 
The Christianity that has arrived to us here in the 21st century, it's just like you. It's just like your families. It is composed of stories of individual people who fell in love with the gospel of Jesus Christ and carried it through their lives. It is full of stories of people who bought the field. They bought the field. They found treasure in this world. Treasure that didn't look like anything they had ever seen before, and they were so filled with joy that they bought the field. Those are our spiritual ancestors. Those people who, when confronted with the gospel of Jesus Christ, could do nothing else but bring it into their lives as the central fact of their being. Nothing. Nothing was greater than that story, that experience, that joy. They bought the field. Jesus uses these two parables. He uses these two parables to tell us about the tremendous value that exists in the world and the kingdom of heaven, this incredible treasure that's right here in the midst of us in the world. It was like a man who found a treasure in a field and upon finding it was so filled with joy that he sold all that he had and he bought the field. Or, or it was like a merchant who bought pearls and upon finding the greatest pearl he had ever seen in his life, he sold all that he had and he bought the pearl. We have inherited a great gift from those people that bought the field. Think about it this way. Just quick show of hands. Raise your hand if you were on the building committee for this sanctuary. No? I mean, the, found, the cornerstone was laid in 1898. None of you? No. No. Right? Right? Not one of us, for this sanctuary that has meant so much to so many of you, not one of us, not one of us raised a hand to build it, to raise the money for it, to conceive of it as a vision. Not one of us did that. Not one of us designed these windows. We didn't do that. The people who came before us, people whose stories we won't know, who were so compelled by their faith that they wanted to build this to testify to. How about this? Look at the Bible in your pew. There's a Bible in your pew. Just look at it. You don't have to take it out. Just look at it. Just quick show of hands. Who helped choose the books in that Bible? Anybody? I want to find the person that chose Hebrews. Who did it? Who cho None of us, right? None of us. None of us wrote them. None of us held them as sacred. None of us protected them at the cost of our lives when persecutions were coming, trying to take those books away from us. None of us met together and chose which books would be in Scripture. None of us translated them from Greek into the common languages so that everyone could understand them. None of us did those things, and yet we have them here with us today. Our building, our Bible, what? What about our music? Jenny, did you write that hymn that you played today? Did not write it. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody was so overcome by their faith. Someone was so overcome by the story of Jesus in their lives that they couldn't help to write that first hymn that Jenny played so beautifully on the organ. They couldn't help it. And it came to us today. This one I know, what about our traditions? What about, our, what about one of the best traditions we have in the church, the Presbyterian women? Which one of you helped start that? Well, we're, we're out of luck again. None of you, none of you who participate in the Presbyterian women helped start it. I'll tell you this about the Presbyterian women. There was a building before this one over on Mulberry Street. If you've read the church history, I think it was built in 1878. Do you know who, 
who raised the money to buy the land. It was the Presbyterian women. They raised $600 in the 1870s to buy the land upon which the building before this one would sit. We didn't do that. But they did. And one of those women, one of those women was so certain that we needed a building which would which would tell everybody what we believed and who we are and that we're here was so certain that our faith demanded this of this of us that you know she hounded her husband day in and day out until he handed over the amount of money that she needed to contribute to that lot. She did it out of joy. Out of joy for the opportunity to do this with her church family, with her brothers and sisters in Christ. All of these things, all of these stories... All of these things that happened before we were even a thought in anyone's mind in this earth, all of those things that happened that have led and culminated in us today, all of those things happened because those people at one key moment in their lives decided that there was nothing more important to them than the kingdom of heaven in this world and the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have all of this Because of that. And so the question that arrives to us today, the question which we receive, is not just what decision will we make. It's not just will we buy the field or not. Because you should understand by now, it's not just about you. It's not just about your decision. All of history has culminated in us. We are, at this moment, the apex of history. All of those stories have culminated in us. And the decision now lies in front of us. Will we make the kingdom of heaven? Will we make the gospel of Jesus Christ the greatest thing in our lives. Will we do that? And the consequences of that decision are not just about us. They're about the people who aren't here yet. What about those people? The people that will sit in these pews in five years or 50 years or a hundred years, or five hundred years? What will our stories contribute to their faith? And if you think that's far-fetched, consider this. Tasha and I worked at St. Margaret's Kirk in Leith in Scotland when we lived there. Do you know how long there had been a church on that site? A thousand years there had been a church right where St. Margaret's is in Leith today. A thousand years. There were a lot of people there who had bought the field. It has reached us at this moment in history, this decision, but we can't just see it as a decision about ourselves. It is a decision that testifies to the stories of the people that came before us, and it also testifies to our hope and belief about what the content of the lives that will come after ours shall be. Jesus told them a story, and he said, there was a man who found a treasure in a field, and being so filled with joy, he sold all that he has, and he bought the field. That decision which rests upon you and me. It's not just the decision of your life. It's the decision of hundreds and hundreds of lives. Amen.